So let me guess, you got a test question, patient had low back pain, they developed saddle anesthesia, bowel and bladder incontinence, you thought it was a slam dunk question, and then you realized that the test writer wanted you to pick between conus medullaris syndrome and cauda equina syndrome. Well, that's the purpose of today's video is to help you very quickly differentiate between these two. Before we go any further, what we need to do is talk about the anatomical difference between the conus medullaris and the cauda equina. Because once you understand the anatomical difference, understanding what symptoms to look for in the vignette is going to be really, really easy. So when I say conus medullaris, I'm referring to the most terminal portion of the spinal cord itself. And in most people, that's at L1. And for the purposes of exams, that's at L1. So conus medullaris, we're talking about the actual spinal cord. We're just talking about the very end of it. When we talk about the cauda equina, we're talking about a group of nerves, L1 to L5, that's not on the spinal cord itself, but that hangs off and dangles on either side of the spinal cord. Now, the name cauda equina quite literally translates to the horse's tail. Cauda meaning tail, equina meaning horse. And look, I mean, a horse's tail looks pretty identical to the cauda equina, that group of nerves, that spaghetti looking thing that's just dangling there. So now that we understand the anatomical difference, conus medullaris being the end of the spinal cord, cauda equina being nerves in a group that hang off of the spinal cord, the difference in symptoms should make perfect sense. So if we have a lesion or some type of pathology that pushes and affects the conus medullaris, we're going to produce upper motor neuron signs because we're impacting the distal end of the spinal cord. Remember, central nervous system is brain and spinal cord. So anything that affects spinal cord produces upper motor neuron signs. And that's also going to be bilateral because we're affecting the entire section of spinal cord. If you compare that to cauda equina, we are going to be pushing against a group of nerves that hangs off either side of the spinal cord. And because we're now talking about nerves that are going off of the spinal cord, we're going to produce lower motor neuron signs in cauda equina syndrome. And because it's on either side, it's going to be unilateral. Now the question is, what causes conus medullaris syndrome versus cauda equina syndrome? So if you're more comfortable with a different terminology, you can think about conus medullaris syndrome as being a transverse myelitis, and you can think about cauda equina syndrome being a lumbar radiculopathy. So lumbar radiculopathy, those intervertebral discs going to one side or the other, pushing up against those nerves that are hanging off, produces lower motor neuron signs, and classically all those other symptoms that you think about with both of these disease processes. Conus medullaris syndrome, if it's a transverse myelitis, transverse meaning across the entire myelitis, meaning inflammation of the spinal cord. So across the entire spinal cord, that's why you see upper motor neuron signs, and that's why the presentation in terms of the motor findings and the sensory findings is bilateral. Now this table I think is the most useful table for differentiating conus medullaris versus cauda equina. And you'll notice that what I didn't put in this table is I didn't put saddle anesthesia, I didn't put bowel and bladder incontinence, I didn't talk about the timing, early, late, gradual, blah, blah, blah. I don't think any of that is useful when you take an exam. When you're taking an exam, the question is, what are the key differences between these two syndromes? And I need to be able to pick that out to get the correct answer. So a couple things to note here. One, conus medullaris syndrome will only affect the Achilles reflex, whereas cauda equina syndrome will affect both the patellar and the Achilles reflex. And I have a mnemonic to memorize that in just a second. Like we already talked about, the distribution for conus medullaris is bilateral because it's a transverse myelitis. So you look at those next three parts of this table. Conus medullaris syndrome is bilateral because it's a transverse myelitis, which means it basically is pathology across the entire L1 distal portion of that spinal cord. And therefore the presentation, because it's the spinal cord, is upper motor neuron. Cauda equina syndrome is unilateral because that group of nerves hangs off on either side. So if you think about, it's basically a lumbar radiculopathy. The intervertebral disc will push up against the nerves on one side, so it's unilateral, off of the spinal cord, not on the spinal cord itself, so it's lower motor neuron. So basically, this is all you need to know, because if you can differentiate the items in this table, it doesn't matter about early versus late, bowel bladder incontinence, saddle anesthesia, all of those buzzwords that you think are important really are not so important. This is where the magic happens in terms of getting these questions correct. So I need to give you the mnemonic here. So cauda equina means horse's tail. So obviously the mnemonic will involve a horse. 
here's our horse. What you'll notice is that the horse is kicking, right? You've, you've seen horses, they do that thing where they put their leg up and they kick. And that kick reminds me of the patellar reflex because presumably he's using his patella to do that. So that means that in cauda equina syndrome, patellar reflexes are involved. So it's both the patellar reflex and the Achilles reflex that's impacted. The other thing that I take one step further is it's one leg that's kicking, so it's unilateral, which reminds me that cauda equina syndrome, unilateral findings, which again, comparing that to conus medullaris, bilateral findings. But that's it. This is the table that you want to know. The horse mnemonic, I guess, is useful, but this is how you differentiate between these two.